Hello, this is uh, Chris Crawford from Capstone Method. And today what I'd like to do is a short video that I'm going to call Anatomy of the Back Problem, which will be one of a series of videos. Um, what we'll cover today is I've noticed that in my practice, a lot of times people will have a back problem and they have some misconceptions of exactly what that back problem, what, what's going on anatomically. And then another thing I see in the general population is when they do have a problem like that, um, they really don't know where to go to get that type of problem fixed. So what we're going to do is after we kind of show you the anatomy in a very simple form, so if you're just a layman with a problem, this will help you understand what's going on, or if you're a practitioner or something, you can let your clientele take a look at. Uh, so then at that point, um, we'll do a series we will show some different techniques that uh, could possibly address and fix that problem. So, thanks. We'll take a look at the anatomy now. All right. So this is the the spine setup. What we have here is <clears throat> we have a vertebrae. There's a disc, another vertebrae. Um, the er the nerves exit through a little hole on each side called the foramen, and right here I'm separating. You can see that the top part of this vertebrae and the bottom have little surfaces that come together uh, and these are called facet joints. If we look at it from this side, there's a facet joint here and there's a facet joint there. As you bend forward to tie your shoes at each level, these joints have to open like garage doors. So this one can tip forward and then the next tips forward and then the next tip forward. Where you get a problem in your back that can cause pain is if one of these facet joints gets stuck open or closed. And I'm going to use the example of this joint right here getting stuck closed. As you go forward, what would happen then is this joint would open, this one stays closed, so what happens is now the vertebrae hinges around there and the vertebrae, this vertebrae, will bend to that side and rotate to that side. And what that does is it presses on the disc, which then in turn presses back into the nerve, and you have back pain. Now the question is, if you're shoveling snow, or mucking out a stall, or lifting something heavy, how does, how does this facet joint get stuck, closed, or how do these things get uh, misaligned? And I'm going to move to a drawer, and I'm going to use that as an example to show you how that happens. All right, we're going to use this common drawer as kind of an example of a joint when it's working smoothly. A joint has a range of motion that it naturally moves through as the two facet joints at each spinal level. If I'm <clears throat> taking this drawer and I pull equally on both knobs, the drawer will slide in and out and work perfectly. Notice I have a little string coming out of the side of the drawer over here. This represents a nerve. Uh, around a bony structure. In this case, we're going to say it's the vertebrae we're, we're looking at in the spine. If the drawer is moving freely, I could take this uh, string and pull it, it would slide in and out. Uh, this is what a nerve should do in the body. It should have the ability to floss in and out of the uh, tissue. If I were to take the joint, drawer, though, and pull on only one handle, like just this handle, what happens is now the jar starts to bind right here. And then if I would take this handle and give it a good jerk, then if I pulled hard enough, the drawer would be jammed and then I couldn't open it or push it closed. And then if I would pull on this hard, if, the, if it was delicate enough, I could snap it rather than it stretching and moving through the, uh, um, what we would say, the tissue of the body. Now, because the, the nervous system knows that this is uh, a nerve or perhaps an artery, what it will do to protect that is it will, it will not allow any motion around here that would put tension on the nerve. So it will recruit muscles in the area to tighten and splint, actually to protect the structure. The muscle spasm is a protective mechanism. Some styles of work would go in and remove the muscle spasm, which is almost like taking a cast off a broken arm. Um, the muscle spasm will come back within probably 24 hours, but if you were to strip that protective muscle spasm <clears throat> and then that person would slip on ice, there's a chance that 
this string could be broken. In the case of the body, that's a nerve, or if it's an artery, that's a real bad news for the person. So there's some strategies to unstick this, and that's, that's what we'll be getting into next. All right, now we're going to expand a little bit on that uh, drawer analogy and say that this person is shoveling snow. We're going to use this joint right here. Now say the person is throwing the snow over his left shoulder with a sh shovel. Uh, think about the drawer analogy. What happens is he comes back uh, and leans backwards, and to the left, what it does is it closes that joint. Where you will develop a stuck joint is if you go with weight farther into that motion, it's called overpressure. So there's actually no play in the joint. It's called closed pack position, where it's bone all, or on bone practically. And then when he moves a little farther in there with weight and comes back out of that position, what happens now is this joint is stuck closed. And that at that point, you might feel a twinge or it might be a cumulative effect over a day where all of a sudden it starts to feel like sharp neural pain or stabbing pain. Now I've used this part of the spine was actually the upper thorax. Where most common low back problems occur would be down <clears throat> in this area here around the, the lower lumbar and perhaps the most common places you'll find is down here at the facets of L5 and also the sacrum has the ability to get stuck like that drawer too. Um, the sacrum is a fairly complex mechanism. It does the opposite of the spine so when the person goes forward the sacrum actually rocks back but the mechanism of it getting stuck and causing back pain uh, is the same as that drawer analogy. Now this is the common situation that I find with someone that's been shoveling snow. They've developed that facet problem, they've got a sharp stabbing pain in their back. Most people have a very limited knowledge of what their choices are. Um, some people will go to the emergency room. Some people will go to the general practitioner. Uh, some people will go to see a chiropractor. Some people will think of a perhaps a physical therapist or they will go and get a massage. What I want to do with this series is show you a different style of work that is very specifically oriented to address that type of problem. So if people do get a back problem, they'll know what their choices are and it, sometimes it'll save them a lot of unnecessary running around expense and they can go in and get that, that problem addressed or fixed. So um, again, the most common thing, people will come in and they'll go, I've got a tight muscle uh, that's my, causing my back to go out. Um, as we just saw, the, the muscle splinting is actually a protective mechanism protecting that joint. So I think you'll find it interesting that uh, we'll do this series and we'll take a different technique each um, video, short video, and show you how it would correct or help fix, alleviate the pain caused by that situation. Thanks a lot. Hope you enjoy the series.